What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Madden 07 Albuquerque Vipers franchise. Today is the off season, and uh, yeah, we're gonna be jumping into year three. Gotta love the off season, especially in these old Madden games, the draft, free agency, just the whole of it. Uh, I, I'm, except if it's something like the CPU drafted a quarterback last year that's like an 85 overall and then they draft another one who's like an 86 or something and in, in which case then it's not as cool it's like what the crap are you doing but hopefully that's not gonna happen this year the Philadelphia Eagles beat the Indianapolis Colts in the Super Bowl a very low scoring 10 to 7 game and then looking at our local newspaper here, we had a fair amount of Pro Bowlers, especially considering the zero that we had last year. The only one I really have an issue with is Jordan Babinox. We'll take a quick look at his stats here and whatnot. Uh, if you go to catches allowed, he gave up 38. If we look around the league, he is number one in defensive backs in catches allowed. Uh, he, all these guys, these four guys above him are all linebackers. And then you got him with catches out 38 of them. He did have three interceptions. Um, but he's one guy that I would possibly consider replacing. Maybe, uh, probably only if uh, someone I see that really good you know, like falls to us in the draft or something. But, uh, you know, he, he could very well still be our quarterback, cornerback number two going into next year. It's just... I, I, he, he got burnt a fair amount. Speaking of the Pro Bowl, the AFC beats the NFC 30-13. to One thing that I did forget to mention is that Shannon Pleasant, the Texans rookie quarterback, was voted to the Pro Bowl despite not winning Rookie of the Year. It doesn't look like he got any playing time though, but he was there nonetheless. Let's see how our guys did when it comes to the Pro Bowl stats and whatnot. Let's see... There's Ben Stabler. He got himself four tackles. That's nice. Jordan Babinox got a tackle. Ike Taylor also got a tackle. So they were there, to say the least. Okay, looking at uh, money and stuff that we got this past season, we made $76 million. That's nice income. A lot of ticket sales and whatnot. Something else that I didn't show was uh, throughout the season last year, especially towards the end of the season, more people were coming to our games, and I think we were actually sold out the last two games. So that is uh, that's extremely moist, you know, after last season where like 20% of the stadium was being filled or something. And Dick LeBeau has retired from the Pittsburgh Steelers. All right. It's kind of interesting because... He still coached for like 10 more seasons, although in this universe, Bill Belichick is already retired, so. Okay, so the Vipers, we're going to need a training staff. Let's go to staffing. Let's go with someone who's pretty well-rounded. Elite Health Co. They look pretty elite. They are expensive, but we got a ton of money, so uh, why not? All right, we're going to take a look at retired players. Drew Bledsoe, he had a good final season. With the Cowboys, eight touchdowns, five picks. Uh, but most of those picks came early on in the season. Then he got hurt against us in week four. He was out for, I think, eight weeks or something like that. Came back and played some of his best football. Got the Cowboys to the second round of the playoffs. But he's going to call it a career. And then Cordell Stewart, he's also going to retire. Uh, for us, he threw 10 touchdowns and 27 interceptions. He finishes his career with 87 passing touchdowns. And 111 interceptions. Did he really not run it in for us? I guess he really never had a rushing touchdown. I would have thought he did, but just 350 yards and 8 fumbles. Priest Holmes, he's going to retire. So are some of these guys. Michael Pittman, after just one season in Pittsburgh, it was a good one too. 1,200 yards and 5 touchdowns. They even let him wear 32. But he's 33 years old, so he's going to call a career. And then another Steelers running back is going to retire. One of the best fullbacks in the league, Max Strong of the Seahawks. He's going to retire. Tony Richardson. You got Muhammad here for the Bears. You got Kinnison. Eric Moltz is going to retire. So the Cowboys losing some, some names and whatnot. Another guy who just spent one year somewhere. Buffalo, Houston, Dallas finishes with 462 yards 
and a touchdown. Got Bobby Ingram. Tight end. The Chiefs lose Dunn. Tackle there. Some guards. Two centers, including this guy on the Packers. Former Seahawk as well. Oh, man. We're going to be missing Ben Stabler. At 33 years of age, he's coming off an 11-sack season. But he's going to call it a career end on a high note uh, of a Pro Bowl, I guess. You know, never got to see the playoffs or anything like that. He is 33, 11 years pro. Didn't get a real chance until the Vipers came around. Got eight sacks that year in the first season, then 11 this next year. Ben Stabler, you will be missed. Willie McGinnis, he's going to retire. No middle linebackers. James Thomas... Harris, just a bunch of just a bunch of guys that are going to retire. John Lynch is going to retire as a New York Giant. I was unaware that he was with them. He got a sack this past season. No strong safeties, no kickers, and no punters retiring. So, let's advance to the next stage. Okay, so we're going to try something. We got a, a, a restricted free agent here in Alex Smith, the tight end of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers he only had one catch last season for 14 yards so we're gonna submit that offer there all right so yeah we did get Alex Smith there at tight end number 81 he's an 83 overall yeah he just had one catch last season he's, he had 50 and 41 in previous years three career receiving touchdowns uh, I like his catching he has 84 catching 79 speed which is not bad at all and something that I just saw here Ike Taylor is holding out uh, fairly so if you will we just signed him last year to a fairly cheap contract he played above and beyond that let's submit this offer here and he agrees so Ike Taylor no longer holding out anyone else holding out that's what I thought all right, time for re-signing players. Leon Harris, I'd like to bring him back, even though it doesn't look like he's going to be the starter now, although his moral is really low. Let's at least try to re-sign him, and he doesn't really like want to join the Vipers anymore. I'm not going to franchise take a backup tight end. So Leon Harris is going to be a free agent. John Clean, he's only a 41 overall. But I like him. He can deliver some nasty hits and whatnot. We'll sign him to this two-year deal here. A uh, hundred, or just not, not a hundred million, no. One million dollars. And he's going to be staying on the team. Santana, Sylvester. Uh, did he even do anything last year? He might have had one catch. One catch this past season, then three in 2006. He had that one touchdown against the Lions that season. I'm perfectly fine with letting him walk. Chad Morton, we signed him late last season to be our kick return man. To see when I come back, I will. Mm, we'll sign him just a one year deal. There we go. And he'll probably be our kick return man. Does Martin Gramatica want to come back? We had to franchise tag him last year. Moral news it's all happiness. Oh, his morale is low, and he's going to tell everyone about it. Let's see. Resigned player. He really does not want to come back to Albuquerque, even though he went 8-8, eight and eight and he didn't even miss a single kick throughout his two-year career here in Albuquerque. He's only missed one kick. But I think I'll, I'm fine with letting him walk. What about our punter, Williams, here? He looks like he's fine coming back to Albuquerque. Give him a two-year deal here. He's got a dope headband. And he's going to be staying. And then DeMario Minter. He was our number one cornerback back in year one. And uh, I don't know, man. He's given up so many big plays this past year, though. I guess I'll keep him for depth. And he's a young player. He still could develop more. Um, but yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a depth guy. So Leon Harris, Santana Sylvester, and Martin Gramatica will not be returning next season.
Okay, so that's the end of the first phase of free agency. I'll show off the uh, the guys that we were able to get. We went after Josh Brown, the kicker, the former Seahawk. He opted to sign with the Bears, though. We did get this guy, Matt Lear, um, the left guard. Let's see, where did he used to play? Atlanta. We got the former Lion in Dre Bly at cornerback. We got uh, John Hall to be our kicker since Mr. Brown did not want to. And then we also got Dante Hall at wide receiver, although he'll probably be doing a lot of kick return duties. Looking at free agent signings around the league, the Jacksonville Jaguars, they pick up Rex Grossman, Byron Leftwich, he goes to the Lions, Steve McNair goes to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Billy Volek goes to the Bears, Aaron Brooks, he goes to the Ravens, you get Kyle Buller going to the Chiefs. And yeah, it's about it at quarterback. Tiki Barber, he goes from playing with one Manning brother to another as he goes to Indianapolis. Jamal Lewis, he goes to Atlanta. Ruben Drones goes from playing with one Manning brother to the other as he goes to New York. Thomas Jones is going to be running there in Pittsburgh. Amon Green goes to Jacksonville. Work done to the Jets. Fred Taylor to the Niners. Got some fullbacks here that got signed. Nothing too eventful. Toomer goes to the Saints. Uh, Terry Glenn goes to the Chiefs. The Bears doubling down on wide receiver here. As they get two of them. And then there we are with Dante Hall. Chiefs also double down on wide receiver. Dallas Clark, he's staying in Indianapolis. And then the Panthers, they're getting Steve. When it comes to left tackle... You got the Cowboys, the Patriots, the Falcons, and the Vikings all making signings. So are the Texans when it comes to left guard. The Saints, they got the best one on the market. We settled for second best there. Then you got Larry Allen. He goes to the Texans. And then uh, you got Rich here. He goes to the Browns. Center here, Jeff signs with the Chargers. You got Teague going to the Steelers. At right guard, the Seahawks improving that offensive line there with Mr. Chris. Uh, the Cowboys, Packers, and Raiders all signed some too. And then the Saints. Saints are really bolstering up that offensive line as they sign the best right tackle as well. When it comes to left end, Julius Peppers. He hit the free agency market. He's headed off to Baltimore. We offered him a contract, but he was just not interested in going to Albuquerque. Seattle also offered him a contract, but he did not want to go there. Or rather, I guess he chose Baltimore over them. And then Justin Smith goes to the Giants. Simeon Rice, he's going to be a Bronco. And then replacing him down there in Tampa Bay is Douglas. And then Mark Word goes to the Panthers. Pat Williams goes from the Vikings to the Packers there. The Chiefs, they get a defensive tackle, as do the Cowboys and the Browns. At outside linebacker here, the Cowboys get this one. Uh, they're Adams. He's going to the Texans. And then the Steelers are doubling down on that position as well. Ooh, Zach Thomas staying inside of the division, leaving Miami and going to New England. And then at right outside linebacker, Joey Porter, a big name there, going from Pittsburgh to Baltimore. So we're, we're seeing a fair amount of uh, guys staying inside of the division and whatnot. The Buccaneers at cornerback there, they get that guy to replace a guy like Rondé Barber and Brian Kelly have both left in free agency. And then where there we picked up Dre Bly. At free safety here, Wilson, he goes to the Buccaneers. At strong safety, Roy Williams, he's a Green Bay Packer. Replacing him in Dallas is Mike Brown. And then when it comes to kicking, Sebastian Janikowski, just one year in Atlanta. He's with the Giants now. Mayer goes to the Bucks. He got Brown going to the Bears. And then there's John Hall, the guy that we signed. Okay, so here is my draft board going into the draft. We got this running back here. Running back, I feel like I would like to get. Uh, just because I, Michael Bennett, he's getting older. He's injury prone. He's fumble prone. Uh, he's not going to be able to keep that speed forever. Oh, no, that's not what I want to do. There, there you go. But uh, the thing with some of these running backs, most of them seem to be pretty injury prone. I like this guy, Nichols. Uh, he's 5'5", looks like Tariq Cohen, but... Uh, he's, he's a fast little dude. 
I'm also looking at center. Center is a thing that I'm okay not getting because the rookie that we drafted last year uh, played decently well, but at the same time, if we can upgrade there, uh, I would also like to do that. We got this guy that we scouted, Chris Diamond. He's projected to go in the first. Another running back here, Phil Van Dyke. He was another guy that I liked. Probably my one of my favorite guys out of the ones that uh, I've uh, scouted and whatnot. Uh, injury is another concern for him. There's this defensive tackle, Marvin Harris, who I thought was okay, but I actually like this other defensive tackle better, Daryl Finnan. Uh, he played a lot better. Uh, it's basically the only scouting report that uh, doesn't really have too much negative to say. It does say he lacks ideal upper body strength, but uh, uh, I feel like he could be pretty good. You also got Mr. Ham at running back here. Uh, he seems to oh, okay. A lot of negatives, though, for him. And then at the bottom here, projected to go in the second or third round, it's Anthony Kaufman. Uh, another guy who's okay, maybe, but uh, has uh, injury issues. Okay, I wonder what San Francisco's going to do. There's this guy, Trenton Van Dyke. He's ranked number one on the draft board. They also got a, there's a left tackle, a running back, a quarterback. I could see them going with either this quarterback from Arizona or this quarterback from Arizona State. Uh, or that I could see them going with uh, Alex Smith. Looks like there's a trade. Texans are moving up to number two. I want to see who San Francisco drafted. And then the Jets are moving up to number three. And it looks like none of those teams took a quarterback. Obviously, the Texans took one last year. No, I do not want to simulate the rest of the draft. Take a look at what they did. The Niners went and got Van Dyke, the right end. Hopefully, he won't be a pain. Texans got a left, ta left tackle to protect their quarterback. And the Jets took a running back. And we're back here at pick number 19. There's Phil Van Dyke. He was these two guys I'm not really sold on. I really like Daryl Finnan. Maybe I could trade back a little bit. Nope. Do we go with Chris Diamond and bolster this offensive line even more? My gut says that's probably the right thing to do. In the sense especially of... Uh, uh, you know, get our run game going, protect Orlando Cross, and we could move him or um, the other guy we drafted last year to another spot on the offensive line if one of the other positions is struggling. So we're going to draft Chris Diamond. Let's see. So the Eagles have offered their first round pick, which is number 32, for our second and fourth. Y'all want to throw in another one? Maybe a fifth? Oh, no. Um, I think I'll accept it because I want that one defensive tackle there. There he is, Daryl Finneran. This might be a tad bit of a reach, but we're going to draft him. All right, we're in the fifth round now because we traded our second round pick and our fourth round pick, as you saw. I forgot we also ended up trading our third round pick at some point. I don't exactly remember when, or maybe that was a compensation pick no i don't know uh but we're in the fifth round now um looking at running back here we're all out of guys that i had already scouted we got greg pleasant cousin cousin of shannon pleasant maybe i don't know we'll go with this quarter or cornerback rather jared knight here in the sixth round we're gonna grab chad Pittman at tight end all right, we still got basically one round left to go, but I'm going to do a quick recap of what every team has done so far. Here we got our center and stuff. Uh, we'll, we'll take a in more in-depth look at what we did. The Bears, they took a running back in the first round. There, the, uh, the Bengals, they took a free safety, and then they took two quarterbacks. Interesting there, they got Redmond, and then they got Pittman. The Bills took a quarterback in the in the first round. Andre Bennett at pick number 21. They also got a safety, a kicker, and a wide receiver. The Broncos, they took a running back. And then in the third round, they took a quarterback, Mr. Small. 
The Browns went with a right outside linebacker. And then they boosted up their offensive line. The Bucks they went with a quarterback. So I uh, wonder if Kyle Cates or Steve McNair will be starting for them next year. I would think Cates would sit behind McNair until he retires, but who knows. The Cardinals beefing up their defense. You got the Chargers. They took a uh, bunch of outside linebackers as well as a running back. The Chiefs went with a defensive end here. Jordan at pick number six. They also took a middle linebacker in the first round. The Colts, they picked up a center. They also got themselves a wide receiver. Dallas, they continue to boost up this offensive line. The Great Wall of Dallas becoming a reality here. The Dolphins boosting up their defense a lot. They also picked up a quarterback in the fifth round, Darnell Valentine. The Eagles, they their first pick was a right tackle. They also got a middle linebacker. And another middle linebacker there with our two uh, picks. The Falcons went strong safety in the first round. In the second round, they went kicker. They got this guy, Ugo Logan from Idaho. Interesting there. With the first overall pick, the 49ers took Trenton Van Dyke. So it looks like they're going to be sticking with Alex Smith next season, trying to get him to develop. The Giants, they doubled down on left guard. They also grabbed the guy I was looking at, Todd Ham. The Jaguars went with a cornerback. And then in the second round, they picked up a quarterback, Bob Clark. The Jets, they had a running back they picked at third overall. And then they also went with a right guard. The Lions got a free safety. They also got some special teams going on there. The Packers are protecting Aaron Rodgers drafting a center and a right guard and then a left tackle and then drafting him hopefully just a backup there of it's a fifth round pick Lamar Carter the Panthers they took Rodgers the strong safety in the first round you got another Van Dyke going in the first round here Phil Van Dyke for the Patriots the Raiders they went with a quarterback in the first round as well they got Jamar Alexander from Arizona. They also doubled down there on outside linebacker. And then they got another quarterback, this one in the fifth round, Charlie Hawk. The Ravens, they picked up a quarterback for themselves after losing McNair, Justin Boyd. Well, they also drafted a kicker in the second round. It's two teams that have done that. Uh, the Redskins, they got a linebacker, a middle linebacker there, and a right tackle. The Saints got themselves another wide receiver for Drew Brees and a nice backup for him. Or I don't know if he's nice or not, but they drafted him in the second round, Curtis Williams. The Seahawks got an outside linebacker, a wide receiver. They got a fullback to replace Strong. The Steelers went with an outside linebacker there. The Texans go with a left tackle to protect their young quarterback. The Titans go free safety and then quarterback. Another guy from Arizona. Interesting. And then finally the Vikings, they took a wide receiver in the first round. And with our final pick in the draft, we're going to draft uh, Steve Farr, I guess it's how it's pronounced. That's how we're going to pronounce it. Ooh, nice, 88 overall. All right, taking a look at our draft, Chris Diamond. An 88 overall as a rookie, 90 strength, he has 84 awareness, and then 89 pass and run blocking, so that's very nice to see. An 88 overall right out of the draft. Then our second first round pick, Daryl Finneran, he turned out as a 79 overall, so still not bad there. Jared Knight, the cornerback that we took in the fifth round. He's a 73. So is Chad Pittman, the tight end from the sixth round. And then our last pick, Steve Farr. Farr? Sure. Uh, he's a 70 overall. So all in all, not a bad draft, especially when you get an 88 overall in the first round. That is extremely moist. All right, so we've officially moved Walt Morrison over to fullback now. He went from rocking 84 to 48. And he actually went from a 73 to a 78 overall officially now. That's nice. 
And LaMarcus Stern, someone who we signed to a three-year deal last offseason, uh, he's just, uh, we're, we're not going to be keeping him around. There's no need to have two fullbacks on the roster. So LaMarcus Stern, thank you for your service. Especially in year one, you were a good fullback, but uh, uh, good, good luck elsewhere. We also have an unhappy camper here. Michael Robinson wants to be traded. I've straight up, I've never seen this before. With like the trade me words are out there. Uh, he, he wants out badly. Uh, I mean, we're not going to miss him too much. I did want to do some more trick plays with him and whatnot. Throwing the ball. But if he doesn't want to be here, then I will gladly trade you. Alright, we'll probably trade him. We'll probably trade Michael Robinson at the start of next season. That way we can get a like a uh, some kind of a draft pick for him. Holy cow! You kidding me? Who even drafted Phil Van Dyke? Was it the Patriots? The Patriots drafted Phil Van Dyke, and then didn't even sign him. Well, I guess I'll sign him. Oh, poor Lamarcus Stern. He's the bottom fullback out of everyone. All right, there we go. We got Phil Van Dyke. So I guess we have three first-round picks onto our roster. That's crazy. The Patriots drafted him and then didn't want him, I guess? Okay, so we got a handful of offers for Michael Robinson. Uh, the highest inning team was willing to go was third round, and I was expecting something closer to fifth round, so I'll take it. And just for fun, I'm going to send him to the Seahawks. That'd be fun to play against them at some time. Michael Robinson is a Seattle Seahawk. And he's the last running back on their roster. Michael Robinson wanted out, and he wanted out badly. Like his morals all the way up now that he's in Seattle. Get off me, wow, dude. Says. Van Dyke can just run you over. He's got good speed, too. I'm loving this. Can you do it again? Boom! Oh, no, it didn't work. Okay, so that's going to wrap up this offseason. Likely another long video. Um, but I want to get in everything with the offseason. Don't want you guys to be like, wait, where'd that guy come from? Or something like that. So, uh, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you're excited for year three like I am. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a moist rest of your day. And until next time... This has been Jeffrey. Goodbye.